Hi, this is Scott Cummins. As we know, this incidence of alpha-gal syndrome seems to be increasing, so we're likely to see more and more affected patients and families. So I thought I would give a couple of uh, pearls, perhaps, related to questions people ask for alpha-gal syndrome. The first part of this would really be testing and diagnosis. It's important to know that Testing for alpha-gal IgE as part of a tick panel or general screening is really not indicated. And that's because there's a high rate of sensitization, meaning alpha-gal positive IgE without clinical symptoms in many different populations and in various areas, particularly if it's a high tick heavy area, an outdoorsy population, may test 20 to 30 percent that are, are alpha-gal IgE positive but yet lack clinical symptoms. So sensitization is, is high. The other point of that is that we really would prefer that clinical suspicion, clinical symptoms drive our alpha-gal IgE testing. Not inconsistent with the way that we approach other IgE blood tests we almost use it to confirm what we're thinking. And this would certainly, I think, be true for alpha-gal syndrome. So we order the alpha-gal IgE when we're suspicious of it uh, or when there's a possibility that it might explain the symptoms that our patients are experiencing. The third thing related to testing and diagnosis is that the alpha-gal IgE level, the blood test number, does not indicate severity. It equally doesn't seem to indicate the threshold with which someone can tolerate a small amount of alpha-gal in their diet. Meaning your alpha-gal blood test of 0.4 could be a very sensitive patient and your alpha-gal blood test of 40 may be someone who can have dairy. And so we, I would discourage you from trying to translate the alpha-gal specific IgE to some threshold of dietary tolerance, but also to, to the sensitivity of, 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 of a given patient's symptoms.